Yesterday, we built up a PC that was so fast that it was decoupling the video from the audio and was causing some popping throughout that video. If you haven't seen that already, I'll put the link up here. However, after researching this issue, I woke up early in the morning, pulling hairs out. What's going on here? What's going on, guys? Why didn't I notice this before the video got rendered? And why did it only occur after the video got rendered? And we're gonna outline in today's video what these problems are. Hopefully AMD can fix them up quickly and then I can get on with the process of using AMD in my main rig because at least one of these problems is critical and it's gonna stop me from using this GPU in my main rig. So let's identify what these problems are right after this sponsor spot. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Today's video is not going to be focused on gaming, even though we will talk about an issue I had while I was gaming on the 7900 XTX. And we'll also talk about gaming towards the end of the video. This video is mainly going to be focused on content creation. This project file right here is the project in Premiere Pro. This is a 24 minute video that we edited out yesterday using the RX 7900 XTX. Now what happened here was is that usually my workflow is once I've finished a video, I'll actually watch it back fully in the editing software itself because you just have so much control and if there's a mistake you can quickly change it you don't have to re-render out that video and then your final render should be all perfect however yesterday's issue was that we had done just that but then the final render introduced some problems of its own now you guys were saying that the audio was popping i listened back to it on my headphones and there was quite a few instances where the audio was popping. Now, this is essentially known as a desyncing issue. And this I've found over the years mainly is caused by frame rates on certain footage being different to the other frame rates that you're using in your project file. CPU temps as cool as possible is that I either put it in my suitcase and then I can keep the rig just for camera. We still have to do a lot of tuning because I don't want this thing so upon looking at the video files that I'd captured and imported into Premiere Pro, I realized something was really off with the Relive software. And that is that it records in a thing known as variable frame rate, uh, VFR. And in the options, there's no way to turn this to CFR, which is constant frame rate. Now, if you're recording videos, you would want to use constant frame rate. Otherwise you are just going to have audio and video desync issues out the wazoo. And actually after looking at this data, I'm surprised that the video even was able to be rendered out as smooth as it was because I inserted a heap of desktop capture clips, especially to explain, for instance, undervolting and things like that with this software. So the first problem, this is the biggest one. I can't use AMD's recording capture software in their adrenaline driver suite for reliable video editing to get you guys content. It's just not going to happen unless they patch this up and they fix it with a constant frame rate. Variable frame rate is an absolute no-no to uh, getting you guys consistent audio and video quality. However, there is going to be another group that will say, why don't you just use a different program like OBS, for example, and have that just record the footage that you need on your desktop. And I've tried this before and it just is nowhere near as fast as having your driver software capture that footage with a hotkey and you've always got that, it's always there, it's always open, as opposed to using a different program like OBS, for example, I've got to open that software and then can conflict with your video editing software sometimes. And you also have to actively have that software open to hotkey recording and things like that. So basically using your GPU's driver software to capture footage is a lot more time efficient than using programs like OBS. So that issue is single-handedly why I'm not gonna be using the 7900 XTX in my main system, at least until AMD can patch this and get it fixed. However, ironically, I believe with NVIDIA, I dodged a bullet over the years 
because I record all my uh, voice work for you guys in 30 FPS. And so Nvidia only has the constant frame rate options of 30 and 60 FPS in shadow play. And I've always selected 30 FPS and I've had no problems with audio, desync and video issues when I've been editing my videos out. However, that major issue aside, there were three other problems that I came into, but these weren't deal breaking. If these were the only issues with the GPU, it would still be in my main rig. The first being that the idle power consumption is all over the place. I'm finding it'll go up to 150 watts when my monitor's on 175 hertz, but if I drop it down to 60 hertz, the power consumption is then absolutely fine on idle desktop. So it looks like AMD either haven't fixed the high refresh rate power consumption, or it's just a new model of monitor from Philips, the Evnia 34 inch, and they have to patch the GPU drivers to idle properly with the 175 hertz option on this uh, monitor. Second issue I had with the final render on Premiere Pro, it looked like the GPU just at times was not working at all. And it was just sitting there doing nothing. And the CPU and the quick sync were coming in and taking the brunt of the work, which made yesterday's video, even though it was a 24 minute video, it stretched out the final render to somewhat of nearly one hour. And so I do not remember the last time it took me over an hour to render out a video. So there was another issue there with I believe what would be cross compatibility between QuickSync and the AMD GPU in Premiere Pro, where the reason the QuickSync is so crucial is because it's got more especially decoding options that will help you in your workflow and make things smoother, especially while you're doing that live preview. The, the final issue I had here, I actually couldn't get footage of this. It was so hard to capture because it would happen once every 30 or 40 minutes. And that is, there'd just be this weird analog-like flash on the screen that happens for only one or two frames. And I'll actually show you an example of on this video where if I look back on my capture on the Relive, it wouldn't come out on that capture and record this on video manually would be so hard because I only record at 30 FPS. And after 30 or 40 minutes, my camera would just fill up with a data and be full and turn off anyway. And this issue happens whether the CPU and RAM are on default with the GPU on default, or whether the CPU's overclocked and the GPU's undervolted. It doesn't matter, both scenarios, it was still happening. Hopefully AMD can patch this up as quickly as possible so content creators can be adopting more of their GPUs and extracting the good value that some of these cards offer. Though in terms of the gaming performance, the gaming performance is really good. Besides that slight issue of an analog pop on the screen, the gaming issues on AMD, especially the RX 7600, that was really good when I was playing that on Diablo 4 and some other games when I was on a bender here a couple of weeks ago. The gaming performance and consistency is getting a lot better on AMD GPUs but the content creation side still needs a bit of work. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, I will say finally, before I get on out of here, none of this at Tech S City, none of this is about fanboys or picking a brand over another to make some kind of a statement. It's mainly about, for me personally, educating myself and giving someone the best recommendation, especially if they come up to me and they wanna build a PC and they say, what's the best PC for $1,000? And my response to that would be, what do you wanna do with this PC? And so naturally, without these issues being patched, I'm gonna say, well, if you're just gaming, think about getting an AMD GPU. If you're thinking about content creation, you might wanna look at an Nvidia GPU. And so that's where my recommendation stands at this point in time. I will update though, as time goes on. I'm actually really getting into this. And although the problems can be frustrating at times. I'm enjoying learning all the nooks and crannies in between, and hopefully you guys are enjoying this content as well, getting the best single end user desktop experience. And I feel like a lot of these companies are leaving us behind the single end user for server, business to business, and all those other profit taking fields. And it's showing in the products that we're getting where I don't know if, about you guys, but it seems like more and more problems keep coming up over time 
as products get released. Anyhow guys, love reading your thoughts and opinions. Do drop your comments down below. I love reading them. Just like this question of the day here, which comes from Bar Davidson 2102 And they ask, by the way, how does the AMD 7000 series CPUs compare to the Intel 10th gen in terms of low latency? And from what I like initially tried with Ryzen 7000, I was really impressed by the Ryzen 7700. That was the one that was like, wow. I was really impressed with that CPU when I used it, just in terms of general responsiveness. But I will be testing an eight core 7000 series, 16 core 7000 series, as well as an eight core 5000 series, because this stuff does take a lot of time to do the testing that I'm doing. Though that video will take a while as there's a lot of requests coming in for that kind of content and it doesn't get made all within a day. It's actually impossible to make that kind of content in a day, but I will do something to give you guys thoughts and opinions there so you can make the best purchasing decision for what you do. And I think there's a lot that's left out in these AFK benchmarks as a lot of us are finding out as time goes on. Anyhow, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.